Welcome to this gentle yoga practice. This practice is perfect for the morning if you need to stretch out a good night's sleep or for the evening if you're looking to wind down. It might be beneficial to have a couple of yoga blocks to hand to help with some forward faults. I'll see you on the mat. We're going to start this practice in child's pose. If child's pose is uncomfortable for your knees, you could also begin this practice in a cross-legged seat and use that pose to regulate your breath. So if possible, take your knees a little wide and you keep your toes close. Walk your hands forwards and stretch them all the way out in front of you. Rest your forehead down to the ground. And if the ground is a little bit too far away, you could place your block underneath your forehead and bring the ground up to you. And then let's take a moment to settle hips towards your feet. And begin to breathe in and out through your nose. With each breath, allow your breath to deepen. Starting to fill up the low back and middle back. And slowly exhale. You can practice ujjayi breathing in this practice if you wish, a soft sound to your exhales. And just a few more here. Breathing into your back, relaxing your hips, walking your hands forwards. One more deep breath in and slow exhale. And please walk your hands over to the right hand side. So both hands walk over to the right and you'll reach away through your left fingertips while anchoring your left sit bone towards your heel. Let your torso melt down. You might have to lift your torso up over your right thigh to get into the stretch, but then soften it back down. Let the heel sink back, reach your fingertips and breathe deeply into your left ribs. Create a nice side body stretch. One more deep breath here. And move back to the center. Move over to the left hand side. So work around your puppy. Reach your right fingertips. Right hip towards your foot. Torso moving over the thigh and then softening down. And breathe into your right ribs. Come back to the center. Rise back now to tabletop, coming up to all fours. Bring your knees underneath your hips and your shoulders right over your wrists. And stretch your feet for a moment if you need to after that child's pose. And we'll begin some cat cows to loosen up your spine. Hands nicely spread, fingertips lightly gripping your earth. Belly down, look forwards, breathe in. And as you exhale, draw your navel up and drop your chin towards your chest, spreading wide across your upper back. Inhale, arch your back. And exhale, round your back. Tuck your toes, tailbone up, head up, breathe in, belly down. Stretching your feet and your spine and tops of your feet down, navel up, nice and wide in the upper back. And again, please. Toes tuck, looking forward. Big breath in, exhale, round it out. Final time, Yogi. Arch your back, press the toes down, look forward. Press through strong, straight arms. Release tension from your neck. Good, and come back to neutral. You may stay here in tabletop if that works best for you. Or if you have a down dog in your practice, lengthen out just a couple of inches, fingers nice and wide or hands nice and wide on your mat. Tuck your toes and elevate your hips. 
Now lift in the tailbone high. Remember to push strongly through your arms. Relax your neck. And you can pedal out your legs a little bit here. And as I said, if down dog's quite tricky for you, you may lower down to your knees and hold your tabletop to build some strength in the arms and core. If down dog's comfortable, prioritize the length in your spine more than you're thinking about getting your heels towards the floor. The straight legs and heels down is not necessarily as important as lengthening up through the tail and pushing through strong arms. And be still for a moment. Take a deep breath. Slow breath out. And another deep breath in. And out. Looking forwards on your mat, start to walk up to your hands and get that any way you can. You might need to walk your hands back to your feet some or your feet all the way to your hands. And you can use your blocks here at the top of your mat and your forward fold. And so your blocks can be on any height, helping you to get the, the legs straight, spine long and bowing down. Feet about hip distance apart makes this the most uh, comfortable variation of forward fold. One more breath holding here. Lengthen on your inhale. Deepen on your exhale. Very nice, Yogi. Soften your knees. Circle your hands out and up to the sky. Big breath in. And to your heart as you exhale. Good. Circle your hands up and look up towards them. Breathe in as you reach high. Exhale, fold forwards. And you can use your blocks once again. Take a halfway lift. Slide your shoulder blades towards one another on your back, hands up to your thighs. Lengthen from tailbone to crown and draw your belly up. Exhale, fold back down, hands to your blocks. Bend your left knee and take your right hand out and up. And taking a twist here for your spine. Reaching the back of a hand up and back. Just rotating as far as you're comfortable, not forcing anything. And release down. And bend your right knee. Right hand stays on your block. Left hand goes out and up. And then again, just rotating as far as you can comfortably, not pushing or forcing. No pain in your shoulders. Just a lovely opening all the way up your spine. And we'll release that down too. Step your right foot back. Plant the heel down so your right toes would point to one on a clock and your left toes remain forwards. Bend your left knee and rise up. Warrior one. Let's keep our hands at prayer today for a gentle practice. So your left knee is over your ankle, right foot planted into the ground. Turn forwards. Right and across your collarbones. Look straight forwards. And take two more breaths here. Back of your neck is long. Set your eyes at one single point. Remain focused with your drishti. And let's straighten that front leg and fold. Keeping this left hip pinned back, you might once again need your blocks in this. So you walk your blocks in until they're right underneath where your shoulders are when your arms reach down for the ground. So you're not reaching out nor forwards, just straight down. And slightly arch your back, bowing down as far as you can. If you've got a little bit of stiffness in the hamstrings, you might keep your fingertips on your blocks. And if you're fairly open in the hamstrings, you might move them out of the way. But again, not forcing into this. It's breathing, gently stretching. Coming up a little bit, soften into that front knee. Walk your blocks forwards and lift your right foot up. Give it a little twirl. And cross your right ankle behind your left. Snuggling the outsides of your feet towards one another, you'll fold forwards here with cross legs now. So this is more of an IT band stretch. 
Tailbone lifting. Spine lengthening. Two breaths. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen. Soften your knees a little bit and stand up once again. So this starts to work your balance. Keeping your feet crossed if you can, hands to prayer. Hold here in balance. Good. And we're going to release your front foot and bring it into tree pose. So you can let your toes rest on the ground if you wish, or you can lift your foot up to your calf, whichever you feel most comfortable with. You'll use all of your right foot to balance, so big toe mound, little toe mound, and the heel. And your toes, while they're active and sometimes necessary to balance, try not to grip them too hard so they're not remaining tense. Hug your right hip into the middle and stand nice and tall, proud up through the chest. And if you wobble out, just make your way back in in your own time. Continue to breathe and set your eyes at a single point to help you balance. Very good, Yogi. Release your left foot to the ground. Circle your hands up, breathe in. Exhale, fold forwards. Hands to blocks or the floor. Pause in your forward fold. And we'll lift up halfway, hands to thighs. Exaggerate the movement. Shoulders slide onto your back. Get nice and long through your spine. Exhale, fold down. This time, bend your right knee first. Right hand stays on your block. Left hand goes out and up to twist. Just looking up if you can. If it's a bit too much on your neck, you can continue to look down. That also helps your balance if you feel a little wobbly in this. Release your left hand down. Left hand onto the block. Left knee bends. Right hand up to the sky. And breathe in and lengthen. And rotate as you exhale. Looking down if that's most comfortable or up if you're able to. And release your right hand down. Step your left foot back. Place the heel down. Your left toes pointing to about 11 on a clock and right toes straight forwards. Front knee is bent, carefully rise up. Hands to prayer. Turning forwards, pause here. Think about that little lift up through pelvic floor and ribs hugging in. So you're supporting your low back. Shoulders are relaxed. Soften any tension from your jaw. Continue to breathe deeply. Good, another breath in. Exhale, straighten your right leg. Start to bow down, pulling this right hip back. Take a hold of your blocks and put them underneath your shoulders. And of course, if you're comfortable going more deeply than that, you're welcome to move more, change the height of them. But prioritize keeping your spine nice and long rather than rounding it just to go deeper. We're prioritizing here the, st the stretch into the back of your right hamstring or into your left calf. Or walk your blocks forwards, lifting the back heel up, but find your balance on your right foot, circle your left foot around. And cross your left ankle behind your right, so the outsides of the feet line up next to one another, or fairly close. Start to bow down again, so now you're stretching into the outside of your left leg, into the IT band stretch. And using the blocks at any height or the floor to support your hands. Start to stand, so press through both feet. Carefully rise, find your balance. And if you wobble out, make your way back in in your own time. Hands to prayer. Pause here for a moment. Smile across your collarbones. And we'll switch into tree pose, Rikshasana. Right foot coming up off of the mat and coming to the inside of the left leg. You can place your toes on the ground for an assist, or you can place your foot on your calf. Keep opening your right knee. 
Use all of your left foot without being too tense in your toes. You can get nice and tall. Shoulders relaxed. Engage into left glutes and quad. Good job, Yogi. Gently release your right foot back to the floor. Step back to the middle of your mat if you ended up a little bit off to the side. Circle your hands up, big breath in. Fall forwards. This time bending your knees. Coming into a dangle pose so the knees have a generous bend to them and relax your neck. Just breathe into your back here. Let the weight of your head gently traction the spine out. So we're not working for a hamstring stretch in this variation. It's more of a spinal release. And we're going to step back to your downward facing dog. So one foot back followed by the next foot. Just like at the very beginning, if down dog doesn't feel good to you, you could go into a tabletop instead. So that all fours position is a really nice alternative here. Three deep breaths in your down dog. Push through your shoulders, tailbone lifts high. Relax your neck. Continue your deep ujjayi breaths. Lower your knees down, land lightly on the floor. We're going to make our way to the floor, lying on our backs. I'm going to move my knees over to the left and spin around to a seat. Right in the middle of your mat, and slowly lie back. I'm just watching your blocks, anything else you may have on your mat. We'll take a bridge pose. So bring your heels close to your bum, hands by your sides, palms facing down, and you're going to press through your feet. On your inhale, lift your hips up. Hold with the hips high, engage the glutes for three and two and one. Softly roll down your spine, all the way to your low back, and pause here. Take a deep breath. Let it go. And we'll go for one more of those. Heels again, still close to your bum. Hands by your sides. Push your feet down. Slightly tuck your tail. Lift your hips and think about your tailbone reaching towards your knees. Pushing through both feet, all four corners of the feet and engaging your glutes. So this is a really a good Stretch out for the front of your body and strengthen up for the back of your body. Take your inhale, stay lifted. And as you exhale, softly lower down to the ground. Once you get there, you can move your left foot just a couple of inches further away from you and cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee. And bring your left thigh in towards you. And if you can, reach around the thigh and hold on to it. For some people, this can be a little bit much. So you can maintain the foot on the floor or you can put your foot on a block at some nice halfway points. Or you can use a yoga strap to clasp around the thigh if you need to. The focus here is on gently stretching the outer right hip. So gently bringing that left leg in towards you, right knee away. Relax your shoulders, relax your low back, maybe close your eyes. Another full breath here, bring that left thigh gently in towards you. And we'll let go of the left thigh and bring both legs over to the left so that the sole of your right foot will find the ground. Now, if this is too much of a twist for you, it's okay. You could unhook that top foot and let the knees stack on top of one another. If you're comfortable here, the sole of the right foot is on the ground and the outer left leg is on the ground too. Stretch your right arm out to the right. 
adjust your shoulders a little so that they can both touch the ground if you can. And gently look to the right. Feel the eyes close. And your left arm can be free or you can hold your right ankle. Either way works. We'll come up and out of this nice and easily. You can unhook first or come back to your figure four shape and place your right foot back onto the ground. And switch straight to your second side. Make sure you feel straightened up. Sometimes we get a little wonky in our twists. Left ankle over right knee. Take a moment, make sure you're comfortable there. Flex your left foot and then bring your right leg towards you. And as I mentioned on the other side, you can place something under your right foot to elevate this leg, or if you can hold onto the thigh with both hands, your left hand threads through between the legs and your right hand goes around the outside of your right thigh. And gently bring that leg in towards you until you feel the outer left hip stretch. And relax your shoulders and your low back. Eyes relaxed and soft. Your breath still quite full. And we'll come out of this and into that figure four twist. Release your right leg. But let both legs come over to the right now so the sole of your left foot start to find the ground and the outer right leg rests down too sometimes you have to wiggle your right foot to make sure it's not stuck in the mat adjust your shoulders make sure maybe lift your right shoulder make sure both shoulders find the ground arms wide or hold right hand to left ankle looking gently out to the left and as i've said on the other side if this feels a little bit too twisty a little bit too bound up for you, you could uncross this top leg and take a stack knee twist. Notice how differently your breath travels through your torso when you're in a twist. Different places of resistance, different places of expansion. Very good. On your inhale, lift your knees back up. You can uncross first or uncross when you get to the top. Straighten yourself back up on your mat and lift your knees in towards your torso. Give them a little squeeze in. Rock side to side across your low back. We'll stretch out for Shavasana. If you wish, you could place a blanket or a bolster behind your knees to make Shavasana a more comfortable position for the low back. Or you can simply stretch your legs out. Shimmy around a little bit, make sure that your shoulders are comfortable and supported by the earth. And the feet gently falling outwards. Adjust the back of your neck so it's long. If you feel like your chin is really lifted, grab a blanket and place it underneath your head. Take a deep breath in, our last controlled breath of our asana practice. And slow breath out. Let it all out and you can breathe naturally for Shavasana. Letting your feet relax. And softening into your lower legs. And your upper legs. Release any tension you hold in your glutes or your pelvis. Soften the belly. Relax the middle of your back and your shoulders into your mat. Let your arms relax from shoulder to elbow to fingertips. And finally, softening your jaw. Relax any tension from your face or your eyes. And as you relax, if your mind should wander, keep guiding it back 
to the gentle rise and fall of your belly as you breathe. Give yourself permission to relax here just for a few moments. You need a little longer in Shavasana, simply press pause and restart when you're ready to finish your practice. And if you're ready to move on into your day or your evening, start to wiggle your fingers and your toes. There's little stretches and movements. Take a belly breath in and stretch your hands out or overhead like a morning stretch and point through your toes as you do. And as you exhale, bring your arms back down and in, bend your knees. And I'll shimmy to rest on your side. You can rest your head on your arm or on your pillow still. Pause in this transition. We'll come on up to a comfortable seat. You can sit cross-legged or have your legs extended. And eyes still softly closed, sitting tall. Press your hands together. And namaskar or prayer position in front of your heart. Thank yourself for coming to your mat today. Let's complete the practice with a full breath. Breathing in and out. Thank you for your practice, Yogi. Namaste.